chair after doing braces, expansion, and a reverse pull headgear. And I noticed this is like confidence building. This isn't just about looking Hollywood. This is about changing someone's uh, confidence and how they look at themselves. So braces is to me more than just aesthetics. It's functional. She could actually chew a hamburger comfortably. Um, so you guys have already started learning that, you know, cleaning teeth is not just about them being pretty. It's about your overall body health, correct? So let's look at, do I just hit enter to go to the next slide? Oh, scroll down. Excuse me. All right. So here you have your different um, parts of braces. You have, can y'all see where I'm pointing at with the arrow? So here you have your individual brackets. And in a minute, I'm going to go over to uh, the zoom scan and show you on a model. Um, so you have your braces, your brackets. Then you have your bands, which 30 years ago, we used the ones that look like a ring that goes around your finger. Now they have what's called bondable bands. You see they have attachments like this hook for elastics. Here you have uh, what's called OCS, open coil spring, and that's to make space between um, this premolar and molar. You have a K-tie which um, if for some reason this particular tooth needs to be moved and you don't have a hook on it, you can add a hook. So that K stands for Kobayashi. You have um, elastic colors to hold in the wire to the bracket. And um, then you have what's called power chain, which are several of these O ties that are connected. And that's just to close space. This pink elastic, um, you know, is bringing back the upper and pulling forward the lower to settle in these uh, teeth into the right position. This is your bracket up close. So the back of a bracket is called a mesh pad. And the reason for this is when you see me put the glue on the back of a bracket, it pushes in like Play-Doh, it pushes into these little grooves, the mesh pad, and it mechanically holds that glue in once you cure it. And then you have other parts on the front of the bracket, like these things here, these four corners are called tie wings because you're tying the wire into this bracket. This line here, shows you where the very center is and you're putting it down the center of the tooth, the long axis. And then you have this red mark, that's called an identification mark. Um, the red mark here always points towards the distal gingival. I love that you guys are taking notes, that's awesome. Um, <laughs> but this particular one has what's called an elastic hook on it. And um, <clears throat> so this red will come off. A lot of patients will ask, you know, why are all these colors, you know, on here? I just want gray or I want uh, clear elastics. And it brushes right off. It's just for us to know the position when we're gluing them on. You have on your typical molar band, your auxiliary slot, uh, the arch wire slot, the middle one, and then this is where you would have headgear. Um, I did bring a headgear with me today to show you, but these are three different attachments. And so you want to be very careful if a kid comes to your office and you're cleaning their teeth and the wire pops out and you're like, oh, I see where it goes. You wanna make sure it goes back to that middle one because sometimes you'll see a patient with two wires one is their arch wire, and then you might have another one up here that's overlapping the arch wire. And so um, making sure you know the difference is very important. When you first get your braces, um, your teeth are crooked, so obviously a nice straight stainless steel wire is not going to move your teeth. So you need what's called a flexible wire. And in a minute I'm gonna show you one of our 
wires is actually called a neosinoloy. That neosinoloy metal comes from NASA. And the outside of the shuttle was actually um, had the neosinoloy metal over it so that it could contract and expand without fracturing. And so for this particular um, wire, you can cool it and put it in any position, but the minute you close your mouth and it starts to heat up, it wants to go back to its original arch form, pulling the teeth with it. So if I were to ask you what moves the teeth, the bands, the bracket, or the arch wire, what would you say? What would your answer be? What moves the teeth? The wire. So, so here you start with typically a 14 nickel titanium, and then you're moving through these heavier um, 16, 18, 20 nickel titanium, and then once the teeth are in alignment, then you can start with your 20 steel, your 1825 steel, and start putting slight bends in it, or using elastics, or sliding the teeth with open coil spring. Um, and so I just wanted you to understand how you start out with the flexible wires and why. And of course we have the fun part for the kids, uh, the colors. So. In our office, we used to give, you know, hey, what color do you want today? If it's Christmas time, a lot of kids will do the red and green. Um, or if they're in college, sometimes they'll do, you know, their college color. So you would get what, black and yellow? And so uh, this is the fun part of the braces. So when you get a kid in the chair and they're a little bit scared, you know, you wanna make it fun for them. So you say, you know what, we're gonna start off with picking your colors. And then by the end of, getting ready to put them on, they might say, oh, can I also get, yeah, you can. Um, different instruments that we use. Uh, the ligature cutter is very sharp. It's kind of like a cuticle cutter. And this cuts your stainless steel ligature wires. Your distal end cutter will cut the back of the wire. You've heard people say, I have a pokey wire. And so um, behind the second molar, the distal, it will actually stick out through that arch wire tube and you wanna cut it, but you don't want it to snip off and poke into the cheek so that this little wire here will actually catch um, the part that you're clipping off so it doesn't snag on the cheek. So that is the purpose of a distal end cutter. It cuts the most distal end of the wire. Then you have your wine guard or what we used to use is called a cinch back plier. And this actually holds the wire so that you can put it into and guide it into the arch wire slot or if it's a specialty wire, the auxiliary slot. Uh, this is a fun one, it's called a math owl. And this is what you take to, um, to place the elastic ties, those really pretty color ties or the power chain. And then of course you have your basic setup, your mouth mirror, your explorer, your pickups. And um, obviously you guys know what, what these instruments are used for. But to take the color ties off, we use the explorer. And if we're gonna go into the drawer and, and pick out the colors, then we'll use the pickups so that we're not contaminating anything. <clears throat> this is your bracket holder. And you'll see in the demo in a minute, um, this is what actually holds the bracket while you're putting the glue on it and bonding it to the tooth. Here we have your band pusher, your sure instrument, and your bite stick. And all of this is used for what we were talking about earlier, those, um, the rings that go around the teeth, the uh, original bands. This is what we use in our office, Reliance orthodontics. You have your orthodontic paste, um, which is the glue that goes on the mesh pad. Your resin to seal the tooth after you etch it, uh, rinse it, dry it, and then you seal it with the resin. The bender brush, plastic mixing spatulas, dap and dish, liquid etch, which, you know, of course we used to use until they came out with the gel etch. Um, I'm not a fan of the liquid etch because you can't control exactly on the tooth where it goes. And then of course you have your mixing pad. 
So as hygienist, you want to put fluoride on the teeth, correct? Because fluoride's good for the tooth. The only time it's not good is when you're trying to bond to the tooth. Fluoride will protect the tooth when you're trying to put 38% phosphoric acid on the tooth to strip away the stain and oils to expose the enamel rods to actually create that bond. And so when you are cleaning the teeth before braces, you wanna make sure it's a pumice or fluoride-free um, dentifrice so that you don't interrupt the etching process. If you have bond failure, all of the glue will be stuck to the back of the bracket and not the tooth. If you have a mechanical failure, the glue will stick to the tooth and not the bracket. Okay, so those are two ways when a kid comes in and says, oh, it just popped off. If all the glue is still on the, on the tooth, then you know maybe they were biting against a pencil um, and there's very little glue on the bracket. So that was something caused by force because the bond was good. Um, if they come in and all of the glue's on the bracket and their tooth is completely clean, then that was your, your fault. That was a bond failure. Here's the etch I like. Um, here's your 38% phosphoric acid. When you are cleaning the tooth with this, you do not tell a parent, oh, we're etching the tooth with 38% phosphoric acid. What we would always say to the parent is, we are using a special cleaning agent to clean the stain and oils off of the tooth so that we have a perfect bond. Now, once you put that on the tooth, um, you know, for however long the manufacturer specifies, you don't just rinse it and let slow speed suction get it. You wanna actually suction it with the HVE off of the tooth and then rinse it. So this is what we call a dry field system. You have your tongue guard, uh, your cheek retractors, and all of this fits in there and it's, it looks very intimidating, but once you start practicing uh, putting this in, it's 100% perfect isolation. You can use your dry field angles, your cotton rolls to make the patient more comfortable, um, but you actually put the cheek retractors in and then slide the tongue guard in. And it's really effective for isolating and keeping everything just completely dry. And then once you etch and rinse and dry it with the two-way air syringe, this is your tooth dryer. It looks like a hair dryer, which mine stopped working this morning, which is why I'm doing the moose and curly <laughs> hair. Um, but this tooth dryer really um, gets all of that extra moisture out. And the other thing you wanna do is tell your patient to breathe through their nose because if they're breathing through their mouth, all of that hot, moist air from their lungs is going to add moisture back to the mouth. So reminding your patient, breathe through your nose, would be a really great thing. And then this is very important. You do not etch the entire tooth. You only need to etch where the bracket is going. So looking at the long axis of the tooth, and then the widest part of the tooth, and then right there in the center is where you're gonna place that bracket for the orthodontist. So this is how you properly etch, and then once this has been on for, let's say 30 seconds, if that's the manufacturer specification, then you would high suction this off, and then rinse, dry, tooth dryer, and then using the resin to seal it. Direct bonding is where you're directly placing it on the tooth. Indirect bonding is how we used to do it. This is um, where you would put A on the back of the tooth and B on the back of the bracket. So that's, instead of being a light cure, it's called a chemical cure, your base and your catalyst. So you would paint um, the A on the, the facial or buckle part of the tooth and then put the other part on the back of the bracket. And when you put the trays on, 
then you're having that chemical reaction and after about a minute it's starting to cure and then the final cure will be in 24 hours but that initial cure is enough to where after five minutes you take that um, you peel that tray off which feels like a bleaching tray material and within 30 minutes you've got upper and lower braces on ready to put the wire on so this is a very um, efficient way of doing braces in an orthodontic practice and you want to save those trays because if you have a bracket come off you can actually cut <clears throat> wherever you know if it's this canine you want to cut on either side and you can put the bracket back in after cleaning it off with um, micro etching and then um, you know you can do a direct bond with um, the light cure or you can put it back in this tray and put it on there and light cure it there's there's different ways of doing it once you get the braces on it is very important to explain how to brush the teeth um, the hardest part to brush is right up under here on the gingival side and above the bracket because that's where everything when you chew and you eat everything wants to rest right there if you are cleaning your house a lot of people don't think to dust the top of the pictures on the wall but that's where all the dust settles right so this is where you're going to want to go over cleaning this is a um, interdental toothbrush that helps get in between instead of using a toothpick a lot of kids will want to use a toothpick or the end of a fork and you want to explain to them how this is specifically designed uh, to brush away any type of you know they eat a peanut butter and jelly sandwich the bread's going to get stuck in between so this is what they should be using and then you have specialty appliances like this expander food will get stuck under here against the palate and if they're not brushing then the tissue is going to get red and swollen and so what you want to do is explain to them how to brush use the interdental brush but this is also a rubber tip stimulator to kind of stimulate the gums to um, irrigate themselves by bleeding and you want to explain to the patient that that is normal for the gums to bleed a little bit while you're getting all of that plaque out of there and and start the healing process so your patient's survival kit would have a toothbrush, um, a mouth mirror, a timer for how long they should be brushing, floss, a floss threader because it's really hard to get that flimsy floss between uh, the tooth and the wire, a travel toothbrush for if they go to school or work, your interdental toothbrush, which is also um, easy travel, and then your wax that you kind of break off a piece, mold it in your fingers to a bowl, and then put it on places like the elastic hooks that are going to irritate their lip. So if, um, like me, my wedding band, um, from wearing it the first couple of weeks when I got married, it irritated me. But then after a couple of weeks, right there, it started to callus up. So when you first get braces, you want to explain, this is going to be uncomfortable, you might get a few areas in your mouth that it rubs against, but after doing saltwater rinses and after about a week, week and a half, it's going to callus up and get used to it, okay? And then you're going to see the patient every six to eight weeks. Explaining to them what they could experience is an explanation of what's going to happen. If you do not spend that time explaining it to them, and they don't know what to expect and they start having pain, um, they're gonna call you and what wasn't explained now sounds like an excuse. So you definitely want to be proactive and explain, here's all the worst case scenarios and here's how you fix it. Definitely wanna take some um, Tylenol or Advil and you tell the parent whatever you normally give them for a headache is what you wanna give them for the, the soreness that they're going to feel. I would, I would always tell them it's almost like going to the gym and working out after not working out for a year and what do you feel like the next day? Sore because you've moved muscles and ligaments that have not been moved in a while. So that's how teeth are. You know you have um, the ligaments attached to it and the minute you start disrupting that and moving it 
it's going to be sore. So letting them know that ahead of time is, um, is very good. Now, braces removal should not hurt. Um, I, I get so upset when I'm at church and a kid comes up and says, you said getting braces off shouldn't hurt. I said, no, it shouldn't. Well, it hurt. You know, I feel like they were ripping my teeth out. So I'm going to show you um, over here the proper way to take braces off. Um, because it should not hurt. If you stabilize the tooth with cotton roll and you squeeze the bracket, it breaks the glue and releases. You shouldn't be pulling anything. Um, so that's one thing I, I definitely want to go over. You have an option to scrape the glue off the teeth with this wonderful plier or the dent, the orthodontist will come over and use a high speed with a 7803, a 7901, a 118S. Um, you know, just doing the high speed is a lot more gentler than scrape, scrape, scrape. For some people, it's like, you know, nails down a chalkboard. And then, of course, you finish treatment with a retainer because it's going to retain what you have actually straightened and worked so hard for for that year and a half, two years. Okay? Any questions?